you got the value of q2 and q3 are the same q2 and is equal to q3 that is equal to minus 0.425 s by h okay that means that the shear flow is getting reversed at point 3 we assumed a shear flow from top to bottom for portion 2 3 and we got the value of q3 as minus 0 0.425 into s by h that means at point 3 the shear flow is getting reversed okay now we have to understand that at point 2 and point 3 point 2 and point 3 the shear flow is constant that doesn't mean that the shear flow is always constant throughout the web so we will find out the shear flow at a point 6 that is that the center of the web okay let q6 be the shear flow at 6 which is center of web you have to always understand that the shear stress distribution will be maximum at the centroid or neutral axis okay and in the case of bending stress the bending stress will be zero at the neutral axis or the centroid but in the case of shear stress it will be maximum at the centroid so you will be having you should you should get a maximum value of shear flow at point 6 the difference is we have to integrate the equation from 0 to h by 2 we integrated the equation from 0 to h to find out the shear flow distribution for portion 2 3 to find out the shear flow at point 6 we have to integrate the equation from 0 to h by 2 because the distance between point 2 and point 6 is h by 2 so i'll be getting q6 is equal to q2 plus s by h cube into minus 3.425 h s2 plus 6.85 s2 square by 2 integral 0 to h by 2 okay so this will be q2 plus s by h cube so i'll be substituting the value minus 3.425 h into h by 2 plus 6.85 by 2 h h by 2 the wall will be h by x square by 4 okay now this will be q2 plus s by h cube this will be minus 1.7125 h square plus 0 0.85625 because we have 6.85 divided by 8 it will be 0 0.8565625 h square i will be taking h square outside so it will be q2 will be minus 0 0.425 s by h plus s by h into minus 1.725 one two five plus zero point eight five six two five okay so finally i'll be getting minus one point two one two five s by h that is at point six the value of shear flow is maximum so i can draw the shear flow distribution it is starting from point three it is increasing towards point six maximum at point 6 then decreasing finally at point 2 okay this is the shear flow distribution at point 6 now we will analyze portion 3 4 and for portion 3 4 we will introduce a shear flow from right to left introducing shear flow S3 from right to left. R2 is right to left. Okay. Now, here the value of x, x is varying from 0 to h by 2. x varies from 0 to h by 2 and s3 varies from 
zero to s where is some zero to minus h by two. Sorry for that. Listen, this is your axis system. Okay, this is plus side, and this one will be negative, and this is top side will be positive, and bottom side will be negative. Okay, so here the value of x varies from zero from this point to at point four this minus h by two, and s three varies from zero to h by two. Always understand that shear flow doesn't have any is proportional to distance, so there is no sign. It will be always a positive. Okay, we will want consider positive or negative to be a, always a positive. Okay, so s three varies from zero to h by two. x varies from 0 to minus h by 2 and the value of y is always minus h by 2 for the portion 1 2 the value of y was h by 2 for portion 3 4 the value of y is from the centroidal axis it is minus h by 2 okay so while if you compare this equations one second now at x is equal to 0 s3 is equal to 0 And at x is equal to minus h by two, s s three is equal to plus h by two. So we can write x is equal to minus s three in this case, and we have the value of y as minus h by two. Let q three four be the shear flow. In portion three four, okay. So Q three four is equal to. I'll add the previous shear flow Q three plus S by H cube integral zero to S three ten point three x minus six point eight five y d S three. Instead of x, we'll put us minus X three. It will be Q three plus S by H cube integral zero to H by two ten point three x value is minus x three minus six point eight five y value is minus H by two into d S three. So I'll be getting Q three plus S by H cube. This will be minus ten point three S three square by two plus three point four two five H S three from zero to H by two. Okay. Now Q three, okay Q three plus. If you put the value or uh, if you substitute the value of lower limit as zero, we'll be getting the value of Q three as Q three same. So I'll be going for Q four. Q four is equal to Q three plus S by H cube, and I'll be substituting the value of S uh, upper limit. So it will be. Minus 5.15 h by 2 the wall square plus 3.425 h into h by 2. Okay, so I'll be getting q4 is equal to q3 plus s by h cube minus 5.15 h square by 4. Plus three point four two five h square by two. So this will be Q three plus s by h cube. It will be minus one point two eight seven five plus one point seven one two five. We have h square. I am taking outside. This is h cube. This is h square. So Q3 plus S by H will be getting 0.425. So Q4 is equal to what is Q3 here? Minus 0.425 S by H, 
and Q4 is 0.425 S by H that is Q4 is equal to 0 so this satisfies our theory we have I have told that the shear flow at free edges will be always 0 and we have a free edge here at 0.4 and that is always the and that value is always 0 ok now you are aware that there is a point 0.5 where the shear flow is getting 0 ok similarly between 0.3 and 0.4 there will be a point where the shear flow will be getting 0 ok to find out that let Q7 is equal to 0 that is the point we have point 1 2 3 4 5 6 we have a point 7 where the shear flow will be 0 we have a point 7 where shear flow will be getting 0 to find out that we have the total length of this total length of 3 4 is 0 0.5 h that is h by 2 and we have for portion 1 2 the value of shear flow at, at which the point is getting the shear flow is getting 0 is 0 0.3349 h at po for portion 1 2 the point at which the shear flow is getting 0 is 0 0.3349 h ok so the point 7 will be h by 2 that is 0 0.5 h minus 0 0.3349 h so that will be 0 0.1651 h ok this is the point 7 ok at point 7 the value of shear flow will be equal to 0 we can just substitute the value of h as 0 0.5 1 in this equation that is equation b then you can find out ok now that this point is your point 0 0.1651 h ok and from here it will be going like this and from here from point 7 it will be going in the opposite direction and it will be getting 0 at point 4 ok at point 7 it will be going towards the right side towards point 3 and from point 7 it will be going towards left towards point 4 ok so this point 7 is called source point if you studied basic aerodynamics we are aware about source flow and sink flow and this point point 5 is called sink point ok so that's all about this lecture this is a really lengthy lecture thank you so much if you have any doubt please uh, comment on the section please subscribe this channel with your friend thank you so much